Hello everyone. This is going to be a little bit of the blogs for Crusher. Our boy Brian Crawford. He says the blogs for the week of November 1st, 2012. So this is actually November 9th. So you know how the mail system goes. You gotta get it in the snail mail. Anyway, it says R.I.P. Marvin Lambert, my brother. Two days ago, I got a letter from one of my fellow wrestling brothers about a sudden death of another wrestling brother, Marvin Lambert, a.k.a. Brain Damage. I was in total shock and disbelief. Marv was an awesome guy and had a heart of gold, not to mention that he was one of the best workers I've seen I have ever had the pleasure of being around and working with. The last time I saw Marv was a couple months before my arrest in 2007. He always greeted me with a handshake and I just enjoyed being around the guy. So many good wrestlers and people, for, for that matter, have fallen to suicide, and I wish I knew how we as human beings could fix this problem. I was sent many blogs to people from the net saying that when things get bad, just go seek a friend. I cannot tell you how many times in here I have had those thoughts cross my mind. But then I went and found a friend or someone who I could listen, who could just listen, and I got through it, and I felt better the next day. Life can be tough, I can attest to that, but we all gotta pull each other up when times get hard. There's just too much ugly in our world, and being a man who is a witness of that ugly on a daily basis, I'm here to tell you that it is tough. Marvin Lambert was a true friend, and I for one will miss him dearly. I know I speak on behalf of my brothers from the ASWA, CZW and IWA and many other indie fed, feds. It broke my heart to learn of this tragedy when I read the poem from the pamphlet for his calling hours. I was just crushed. As an encourager in the Horizon program, I decided to talk to my guys about the grief the next day. I told them the grief is hard, so we prayed for Mars family and those affected by his loss. I told stories about the good times with Marv and even cried a little. It's going to take some time to heal, but I trust I will see Marv again one day in that big ring in the sky. May you rest in peace, Brother Marv. I'm going to miss you. You may be gone, but you will never be forgotten. Much love, Crusher. Okay, now Crusher also has some food for thought. He says... The beauty of individuality is the unique ability to see someone or something, whether they are abstract or concrete, and it is not what we don't know, but what we know that isn't so. It's ironic that we fear opening and exposing ourselves and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable because we are generally admired and revered when we do so. If we give in the world what we want the most, we will heal the broken part in each inside of us. To live outside of oneself and see others from their perspective is a challenge of empathy. When we live with empathy, we lessen the divisions that exist among us. There is an interesting phenomenon that exists when we learn about ourselves and become better human beings when we take the time to see and help others. And that's some food for thought from Brian. And then here's another little bit of the blog called Crusher's Best Friend. I miss my dog. Before I was incarcerated, I had a Great Dane. Her name was Luna. That dog was like another child and would sit back and reflect. She was a good, smart dog. When I needed a good laugh in here, I think of all the funny times when I was at home with my dog, Luna. It's so sad because when I was incarcerated, we lost our house. My wife at the time was forced to move to a trailer park and Luna's a 110 pound dog. So you can imagine that did not work so well. My ex ended up having to give Luna back to my friend who gave her to the first place. And I've not heard or seen anything of Luna since. I wish I just got a picture of Luna. That dog made me smile and laugh. She was the best. She had this funny thing she did and I would sit on the couch and watch TV and she would sit beside me with her front paws down and her hind legs out, basically sitting like a human being next to me. 
She would look at me and I would ask her what she wanted to watch and she would bark at the TV until the show she wanted to see. It was hilarious. Luna loved the show affection and was just a good dog. If you have an animal in your life, I hope you can relate. So my thoughts now are if and when I finally make it out of this place, I hope to get another Great Dane, or if I get a small place, maybe an English Bulldog. I've always wanted one of those. Maybe you can give me some name ideas, and I'm open to all suggestions. Thanks for listening. I just missed my dog today, and I thought I would blog about her. God bless, Crush. Now this is a little bit funny, actually. And it's prison terminology. I think it's hilarious. So, here's some prison tidbits for you, eh? Many of you who have been to prison, never been to prison, may sometimes wonder what it's like in here or wonder what kind of TV or food we eat. I figured I would give you a little rundown. When it comes to TV, it's not all that. If you go back to the time 20, 30 years, it's kind of the TV we get. We have 25 channels in one house prison movie channel. We're MCI, we even have our own network. Kind of funny, huh? And it's called PNN, Prison News Network. Every Friday night, we get one to three new releases, and they play them over and over and over for a week, with a few older movies mixed in. Sometimes I get to watch a TV series episodes like The Sopranos. Imagine that. Other than that, we get normals like ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, WMFD, MyTV, CW. I guess I should be thankful that I even have that, and honestly, I'm so busy helping in this program, I don't watch much TV. I do gotta say, Hawaii Five-0 and Nashville are my shows. I'm addicted. Of course, I get my dose of wrestling every Sunday night with ROH Wrestling on Fox. Okay, prison terminology. When I came to prison, I had to learn the terminology of the things we say in here. In a way, it's kind of funny from the world out there but in here it's how it's done it is how it's right so here you go I'll tell you some stuff if I forget some words I'll add them later okay first word is what is a break a break is when you take food such as ramen noodles sausage chips cheese and any other item you can think of and put it all together to make a big dish for about six guys some guys also call it break and bread a Viking is a dude that is very unclean and messy and smells. Ooh. I don't think I'd want to be a Viking or be around a Viking. <laughs> Another term is a cell warrior. That's a guy who never leaves his cell and is just scared or doesn't want to do anything. Another word is mush fake. When a guy makes something from scratch or by hand with any kind of item he can find, he's a mush fake item. Some guys can make some really cool stuff out of nothing. Another word is bitten. Bitten is just how a guy does his time. How a guy does his bit is basically his way of life. There is no money in prison, so no money in here is paid for the way of... The money in here is paid by the way of Debbie's. Yes, little Debbie's. Like ramen noodle soups. And it's also called Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams. Other words like hit and a lick is when a guy may be given a lot of stuff from someone who's going home or if someone steals and gets a lot of stuff. Pretty sad but true. When a guy gets stole from they call it kick in the box. Where all you keep all your stuff in boxes in here. If someone don't like it they may kick your box and hit a lick with your stuff. That's just how it is. Finally you got the homos in here which are called pitchers and catchers. Yuck, I know. But it's real and it happens. I stay away from those dudes. <laughs> Laugh out loud. God has blessed me to be in a pretty safe spot thus far, and I have seen it all. I hope you get a kick out of the first blog in prison terminology. Take care, peeps. And last but not least, way to go, Rams. Just want to congratulate the Rams on their first round playoff win. That's awesome. Keep it up, guys. All the way to state. So, there's a little bit of stuff from our, our boy Crusher to let you know how he's doing. 
and I visited him on the 5th and he's doing pretty good actually he's you know he's doing his thing trying to do his time and just helping people in the horizon program and just really being a good person trying to keep his life straight and I want to thank you for watching this blog and listening to me ramble on and read what he writes to you guys each week and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone.